the Academic Staff Union of University ASU on Wednesday insisted that it is not ripe for schools to reopen in the country. The union said the federal government's directive for schools to reopen across the federation amid the coronavirus pandemic could endanger the lives of Nigerian students. ASU National President Biodun Oguyemi said the federal government was experimenting with a crash model and needed to decontaminate schools. In his words, it is not about income for teachers, income for workers here. It is about the need to avert disaster. Joining us uh, via Zoom is Yomi Fawehimi. Uh, he is a human resource management professional and also a former lecturer. Good to have you. Good morning. Good to have you, Mr. Fawehimi. Do we have him on the line? Yeah, good morning. Thank you for joining us uh, on the show. Now, what's your thoughts on you know, the ASU stance? ASU is saying, we are not ready, we shouldn't go back. What do you think? Uh, I think uh, I'm, I'm not necessarily aligned with the ASU stand. I'm aligned with the stand of any Nigerian who has children or who uh, is concerned about the state of the Nigerian child. I think our schools are not yet ready to be opened. Uh, I have not seen any evidence of our preparedness to receive children uh, having taken cognizance of all the precautions that need to be taken before schools can open in this uh, COVID situation. So I personally do not think schools should open yet. I think I think we're being too hasty and we're not prepared for what we want to do. Hmm. You know, uh, as we made mention of uh, decontamination, uh, do you, is decontamination actually the only concern? You know, many government universities already have issues with overfilled lecture halls. How will ensuring all safety protocols even be followed? Should they be allowed to go back to school? I actually don't think uh, absolutely should necessarily be the reference point because the announcement mm -hmm. was for the opening of schools in terminal classes, uh, specifically uh, GS, uh, no, uh, primary six, uh, GS three, and uh, SS three. I mean, those are not necessarily the people in the ASU uh, scope, as it were. But uh, speaking directly to your question as regards uh, whether the contamination is the issue, the issues are more broader. I mean, one, um, at the school, the first question, I mean, the Center for Disease Control of the U.S., and NCDC has also issued guidelines before, you know, our federal Ministry of education had issued conditions before schools are open. The first is, is the school prepared? Is that preparedness on the part of the school to receive children in a safe manner? Uh, the, our schools are not yet prepared. There's no evidence that anything has been done. I mean, states like Ohio State have claimed they have done training for their staff. Uh, to receive children. It, 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 for a school to be prepared to receive children in a pandemic, it's not just about training staff, it's also about the level of infrastructural availability in the school and the support system. That's the first thing. Secondly, the school must also be prepared to test children every day. It's not a question of, oh, the schools have been prepared. There must be daily checking for every child before they resume at school. Our schools are not yet at that point. In Nigeria, we have schools, for example, that don't have fence. And children come to school from various angles. Some come from the back, some come from the front, some come across the school field. And is that how will you be able to do daily monitoring or temperature in a school that doesn't have a fence? Also, part of the issues that we need to think about is how will we be able to maintain social distancing in those schools? Uh, the average classroom to, a ch to children ratio in Nigeria is between 1 to 35 to 1 to 40 in Nigeria. Mm. And there are states that we have recorded statistics of up to 1 to 65, 65 children in a single classroom. So how do we want to maintain social distances in those classrooms? What many countries have done is to limit class size to 15. So how do you want to do that in those kind of scenarios when you already have 65 children in a class? Mm. And then finally, what, how do we ensure that learning is effective? So in many countries that have tried to open, and let's also say the many countries that have tried to open have also closed down. Some of them have had to close down already too because they realized that they were not prepared. Mm. It's a question of face masks in those schools. It has been found, uh, studies have shown that if the teacher wears the face mask and the children wear the face mask, there is no effective communication between both of them. That the face mask interferes with the uh, 
facil with the facilitation of learning between both of them from the teacher because the students cannot see the body language when he's saying and also the voice may be modeled up and also from the student so you are a teacher you are teaching this child who is a 12 year old a primary six child one of the things you are doing when you are teaching is high contact you are trying to check body language you know whether they are understanding but this child's half of the face is covered how do you do that mm -hmm. so you realize that we're not we're not really prepared for what we say we want to open the last one and that's very peculiar in nigeria is how do we get those children to school nigeria is one of the countries where children go to school with public transport not school buses and they don't walk to school so a child in Lagos, for example, attends uh, Ikeja Grammar School or Ikeja High School, but stays in Akute. He takes a motorbike, the Okada, from his house to Akute, takes a bus from Akute to Ikeja, then takes another bike from Ikeja to his school. Mm. That child has an exposure around three public transport routes to get to school. That's like going to happen to a teacher and to the gate man and as a sister teacher and all of them. If it's a country where children go to school in star buses, you can regulate it, they can regulate the transportation of these children to school. We don't have that. This child finds his way to school in most states in Nigeria. So who is going to take responsibility for protecting those children on their way to school and on their way back to school? Hmm. I think that we are opening too soon, and I, I, I think we are taking a risk that is not worth it. I mean, thank you very much for breaking it down for us, you know, there. The, the issues are quite complex. Uh, but as a parent, it's, it's actually difficult to know where to find the balance. You know, some people are saying, well, um, we've not, our, our kids have not been in school for four months now. That's not, that's not the elite children, you know, who have been studying online. The average Nigerian child is being away for four months, not learning a thing. Others are saying, well, they need to be alive to be able to go to school. Where should virtue stand in this case? You know, we say virtue stands in the middle, but we seem not to be able to find the middle. What assurances do you need as a parent to say, yes, uh, maybe we should move on? Yeah, but again, let's, let's, also, let's also work with the reality of the data that we have. Uh, in Nigeria, typically, after the end of the third term, children go on what we call long vacation. Long vacation in Nigeria is over three months. So we have not, the children have not lost four months. What has just happened is that we have taken long vacation before the third term. If these children resume today and they're able to finish the third term, they'll be able to resume in September. So we have, it's not as if we have lost four months of learning in real time. It's just like those children went on long vacation. Mm. And therefore, we should not stampede ourselves as if we have, we have, they have been out of school. By our design and by our school calendar, they are typically out of school every three mm. to three and a half months at the end of the session. So that's what has happened as of today. Now, what assurance does a parent need is a question of balance, like you say. But the question is, education is child-centered. Education is not school-centered. The goal is not to open the school. At the center of education is a child. So our, uh, the question is not about the school. The question is about the child. And therefore, if the goal is, oh, our school, let's, let's let the children go back to school, you are focusing on the school. Education is child-centered. And that's why the safety of a child is paramount. So as a parent, if you hear that your child's school is going to resume, it's your responsibility as a parent to ensure you go to that school to go and check. Don't let any school proprietor or any headmaster tell you the school is ready. Use your eyes to observe, check. Do they have places to wash their hands? Uh, is there to ensure that happens before your child sends us of the house? Mm -hmm. You need to also check how your child gets to school and how your child is protected from that. But don't say you because you want your child to go back to school, you not jeopardize the chances of the school. And also maybe a call to school heads and school proprietors too. If you open your school too easily and you are not prepared and a single child has COVID and government knew, the same government that act that said that you can open school will shut down your school. Mm. All right, not I'm only afraid. will you shut down your school, you, your school may also be blasted by parents in the neighborhood. So mm. it's a risk that you ask yourself, is it worth it? All right, Yomi, thank you so very much for your contributions uh, this morning and do keep safe also out there. Thank you. Thank you.